The Elegoo Saturn II is Elegoo's newest 3D printing machine. It offers a higher printing height of 250mm and 8K resolution on the LCD screen. With this machine just coming out one month ago, there have been a plethora of reports of people saying that their prints aren't sticking to the bed perfectly fine. And initially, the main culprit was a leveling card. The problem was is that the leveling card was too thick, so it made the gap between the bed plate and the FEP sheet too big, and that allowed too much light lead to happen, so the resin wouldn't properly cure on the bed plate, eventually leading to failed prints, prints coming off the bed, or prints just splitting apart because there wasn't enough of a good adhesion to the bed. So all I'm going to do today is I'm just going to teach you what I did to actually make the printer work, make the print stick to the bed and the settings that I used. This is going to be mostly for the uh, Sariatech navy gray resins and the Elegoo AK resins. Like the settings I'm going to show you is going to be the best for those specific type of resins. I actually replaced the FEP sheet. This is not required, this is optional. I just don't like Elegoo's FEP sheets because they're thicker than the usual FEP sheet. So instead of what I did was I removed it and I put in a Sariatech and FEP sheet. It's thinner, so there should be some more exposure going through. Of course, the only thing is that it's probably not gonna be as durable as the Elegoo sheet, but I'd rather it just be more quality or faster exposure times as opposed to just how long the FEP sheet can last. So here what I'm doing is I'm just putting in the vat with the new FEP. Now the biggest difference is I'm actually going to level it against the FEP sheet. Now this is something that a lot of people don't really talk about, but honestly I just found this to be the best way to level your bed is against the FEP sheet itself, not with a leveling paper. I feel like the leveling paper doesn't give you an accurate sense of how thick the FEP sheet can be. So that's usually what I do is I'll just level it against the bare FEP sheet. Um, I just, I loosen it up, put it down to the home position, and then I put just very, very little pressure on the bed, just holding it in place while I tie it down on the uh, bolts. I know I didn't use my hand, but I was just trying to demonstrate how exactly you would do it with the bed plate on the FEP sheet. Um, again, you could just put light pressure with, with your hands and then just tying down the bolts. And when you tighten them down, you really want to tighten tighten them down. Like, don't be afraid to go crazy. Like, obviously, don't don't go Hulk and go over like the tightness, but just tighten it, tighten it really, really well to the point where like you know that thing is stuck inside there. Uh, that's usually what I find also helps to keep your build plate level for a very long time without having to re-level it. So now, um, once you finish all that, you level your build plate, everything's good to go on the machine, you're gonna go into your slicer. Um, you can use your two box. I like to use Lucky Slicer. It gives me like the best kind of like UI and it's just, it's smooth. It just doesn't crash on me like the way two box does. Once you get your, pr your program running, you know, your 3D printer, you go into your machine, which is going to be most likely the Elegoo Saturn 2. Then you go into edit the settings. So these settings are actually settings that I use but I have a special trick for allowing these settings to work, which I'll probably make another video. Something that I need to mention also is that, again, these settings are for the Elegoo Saturn II printer. So these settings might not work on your printer, but this is a good baseline to use to really like mess around with and see what works on your printer. Also, this is for monochrome printers also. Basically, any printer is made after like around 2017, 2018. Usually that's when monochrome printers start becoming a thing. Um, LCD printers use a lot more time for the exposure, so this is definitely recommended for monochrome printers only. But what you want to do is you may want to make at least the base layers 6 with the base exposure times around 35 seconds. That's usually the, the perfect time frame for it. You could go lower, you could go higher. Honestly, the, the top you want to go is 40 seconds. Don't go any more over that. If you, ha if you have to go over 40 seconds, there's something wrong with your printer at that point. There's no reason why you should be using more than 40 seconds on base layers. Um, finally, transition layers. I like to add at least one or two. Let's add two. Um, I find that adding transition layers usually adds a smoother transition into the support beams. So that's why I like to use that. Lift distance, it can be five, six or seven millimeters. This goes depending on how big your model is. Let's say like right out of the models that I just had right now on the build plate, I'll probably use five millimeters. 
anything bigger you should go higher and like if it uses the whole bit plate i'll put like seven or eight millimeters around there lift bottom lift speed you want to probably keep it keep these this setting as slow as you can while still maintaining good speed because this, this is like the first layers so there's gonna be a bunch of like like hardened resin on the build plate so you want to lift it very slowly so it doesn't you know tear up the, the fab as it's coming up we track speed is how fast it goes down 180 is fine layer thickness 50 micrometers which is 0 0.05 millimeters exposure time uh let's for the first time you could try going with 2.9 seconds try doing that see how it goes it should work if it doesn't you could try going up um 3.5 should be the highest you, you go to for these kind of resins specifically don't go above 3.5 if you had to go to above 3.5 try changing some other settings but again like let's just start with 2.9 seconds it's a good base time to start with to see if your printer can do it lift speed four or five millimeter you can go a little lower on this one since it's probably just going to be printing the model itself now i won't be printing out the base layers lift speed again uh you could put that at 60. you could, you could put it at, at 120 also but that really won't be necessary um I'm sorry, not necessary, but like usually like people like to use like 75 or 90, like anywhere within that because it gives a good balance of speed and like you know less failures. I like to I like to use slower speeds just to make things more safer and make things come out better looking because that could also affect how well the um, model sticks to the support beams. Retract speed again, 180 is fine. Um, weight before print. So these are just basically settings that will make the bed play either weight before curing or weight after curing um this is getting to look a little bit more of an advanced topic which again i'm going to make in the next video which will teach you how to use these settings properly and uh that's it really that's really the settings that you really need to get your first print going perfectly fine um you could kind of fiddle around again with the base exposure time and the exposure time also you could usually those two are the biggest culprits for like failed prints people usually don't set them correctly or they'll use an exposure time they read online which is like 1.5 seconds but the issue is that yeah it might look good on the exposure test but it won't really translate really well into real world printing so this is the time frame you want to use so what happens to the first model that i printed Failure. so remember when i told you that you should use a transition layer so if you look closely you can actually see that base layers are printed and stick onto the bed plate perfectly fine is when it gets to the regular layers is when it started uh, ripping apart and this is because this had zero transition layers with only five base layers so instead after after i looked at it i noticed that kind of failure i added and now i made it six base layers with two transitional layers like you saw in the video and then finally success and that's it that's all you need to get started on your elego saturn 2 or any other resin printer if you have any questions, feel free to comment below and I'll try to help out as much as I can. Uh, these settings should work for the Soraya Tech and the Elgo AK resin. For any other type of resins, it might require different settings, maybe more exposure, um, usually probably more exposure, but you could definitely look at the exposure sheets and see exactly what baseline you should go off from. And uh, yeah, that's it. I hope you guys get your printer working and you get some uh, nice prints going.